Um, welcome back to Star Girl. This is season two, episode five. Uh, same name of convention as we've always had. Uh, I don't know how to say this, and I don't know if I should, but if you want to get straight to the episode, please skip ahead. Um, I just felt like I should say something um, because it's been weighing on my mind and it might affect the reaction and how I'm doing this episode, but um, it's Friday right now. Uh, I've been busy this week, like I've been for last week. Uh, and on Monday, we had to put our dog down. And so you might, if you've been <laughs> a viewer for a while now, you've seen her show up a couple times or me at least looking, looking this way, sort of checking on her every now and then or sometimes I'll be talking off camera that's me talking to my dog so it's just gonna be a bit different um it's kind of empty here at the house now like just a sort of a emptiness um and so yeah I just wanted to bring that up just in case like I said I'm in a weird state of mind today I, I spent a good <laughs> five minutes just staring at the screen thinking if I wanted to do this intro or not um but you know the show must go on um okay so last time on star girl we had the return of Sportsmaster and tigress artemis focus episode finally getting some isa uh progression which is what i've been sorely needing for this show um some interesting thoughts with shade bringing up that pat might be hiding some stuff i'm curious what he's hiding is it the fact i mean the way that Pat's talking, and from what he would know, I feel like he's not lying or hiding anything about Dr. Midnight. I think Shade is hiding something about Dr. Midnight. So I really don't know what he's referring to, and I'm curious if we're going to learn that anytime soon, or is that going to be a, a problem for later? Um, we did leave off the episode with sort of cliffhanger about Courtney's going to find the Shade, as well as Dr. Midnight's in the Shadowlands somewhere some interesting questions there. So, let's just get into the episode and see what happens. Ma! Cindy? Cindy, honey? Cindy. Cindy? He's behind the door. Please. Not actually. Not actually. Oh my god, he is there! <laughs> Bruh. Killer Croc looking ass. Uh oh. This is her last target before she gets to Mike. Oh, she has powers too? The whole family? Jesus. Okay, are you sure no one fought? Uh, is it? It's an hour past curfew. A super villain was more honest with me than my own stepfather. Okay, court. So I went out to go find him, to learn more, to ask him to team up. To team up? I think it's because Eclipso's here. Even if that's true, how does bad weather help us find the diamond? Fucking I'm Artemis sure. attacked you. Put the pieces yeah, together. Know, it's interesting because it's playing up the okay. theme of Courtney. You're sure, there's nothing else. I gotta talk about this. Because. Um. They mentioned it earlier in the season, like episode two, right when she was having her spat with Jenny. Pat was like, your greatest superpower is that you see the good in people. And she's using it, you know, she's seeing, she's trying to see the good in the shade um, and trying to convince Pat that, hey, maybe he deserves not a second chance necessarily, but like the time of day. <laughs> so um, I really like that plot thread they're going with here, you know, bringing that character theme again. What are you hiding, sir? Look. <laughs> okay, you can sleep with us tonight. Come on, let's go. I wouldn't paint today, dude. Looks like it's gonna rain. It's gonna smear it, isn't it? What kind of... Why is everyone in summer school? What is wrong with people? Why? <laughs> that looks a lot like Courtney Whitmore to me. Why would you flip through people's shit? That's so rude. That's fucking rude. No. I don't care about this conversation. This is so dumb. No! 
ma'am. For why? <laughs> For why? Jesus. Bruh. What, what do you want? Why are you here? Believe me. And you do not want to see the finale. Why don't you just work with them? To no. Your goal is the same. Better we can never speak of that cursed gem. He's spending more time telling them to stay away than actually searching for it. He's he's trying to <laughs> Rick <laughs> Fuck Rick Bruh This poor dude he's just trying to live his life Cameron deserves none of this bullshit they're giving to him. Dude. Also, I just wanted to say, I like that they're using warm colors to paint Jordan's face. I think that's funny. Ah! Not nacho cheese. Yeah, I, I knew it was supposed to be paint, okay? I'm just... Why? All this damn stop signs. You didn't have to come. It's dangerous. Is he corrupted? I like, I feel like the shade. I, I was... he's been so angry this episode. Mike, more than you know. I mentioned before, what if he dies, but what if he's... In fact, we had that last season, though. Find a JSA project that he was mind-controlled. It's me. <laughs> I kind of shipped them, though. Like, <laughs> as messy as it would be down the line. <laughs> They're cute! But he is like such a man child. I don't mean that in like a attitude kind of way. It's just like he's so his arms are so hairy, but he's also short. <laughs> just, you have been blessed. Not that, <laughs> <laughs> bro. Uh, uh, sorry, just <laughs> kiss him and leave. Let's go. I have to go. Give him a kiss. Give him a kiss. Girl, kiss him. Kiss him. Oh, yeah. At the prom, didn't she? Cameron is the most valid person in the shot. But it, he didn't do anything wrong. He's just existing right now. I have no idea what's going to be in here. Like, is he transformed? Is I have no idea where they're going with this storyline right now. Ah! Oh shit! She gonna scratch you! Look out! Okay, Beth. Not that. What the? F Hello? Blast it! <laughs> get, the, get it the fuck away! There's a whole lot of not people not doing things right now. There we go. Get into some action. I wonder why she's not affected. The CG is really. Mm, I don't like the CG for the paint thing. What just happened? So y'all three were useless. <laughs> Well, no more summer school. You're fucking teachers. <laughs> I don't trust you, Pat. Getting stronger. Something's up with Pat. He's been weird this episode. No. No. But maybe we should Terrible. More tonight as a family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's, let's do that. Yeah. No. She deserves it right now. Get the fuck off! <laughs> God, that's so bad, bro. I, I guess I don't know. Oh, it's coming out. It's kind of a middling episode today. Uh, again, I don't know if it's my headspace or what, but. You know, there are some interesting moments. I liked the playing up of the horror element 
for like the supernatural and stuff this season is promising us and i like that they're focusing on that a lot this episode um just sort of the eerie vibes and you know everything's like in darkness and it's kind of like mellow and um yeah uh, it just felt it didn't like i wasn't scared or it wasn't like a terrifying or you know there's there was definitely moments in the show where it's been more horror-esque um but it just kind of like felt very muted and like you could just feel the weight of Eclipso in this episode, even though, again, we didn't really see him. Um, I don't know. Just I, I, I'm very intrigued. Again, because this is such a like a vibrant show, and and when they're dealing with characters like the Shade, <laughs> whose powers are shadows, and Eclipso, who is like such a demonic entity, um, it's just such an interesting blend to bring to this show. So I, I, you know, I like I said I like some of the other episodes this season better, but this one still brought its own unique flair to it, um, and so I appreciate it for trying at least. Uh, we had Mike again. I I'm I'm of the camp that I understand where they're going with it. Um, I just feel like he's. I think we're making some decent progress with getting him on board with the JSA, getting through that barrier of you're too young to do dangerous stuff, but we still want you. And, you know, we want to show you how much we we love you and care for you and want you part of the family and everything. So I like that we got that little scene with uh, him and then with Pat and Barbara, you know, just kind of coming up with a, a middle ground of, you know, we're not, you're not going to be getaway driver, you know, stop trying to be like a full fledged member and just accept that you're still a part of this group. I'm nervous because I think we need to make more progress quickly. If, if Cindy is now gunning for him specifically, you know, it, it makes me think, okay, well, if we don't get past, you know, if we don't strengthen up his loyalty quickly, um, he's going to turn, but I also don't think it'll be a permanent thing if he does turn, you know. I think I think this show is such a focus on found family and, you know, seeing the good in people and stuff, redemption. So I, I think it'll like I said, if he does turn, I think there'll be you know, it won't be forever. Um <laughs> again, I her little squad of evil. Artemis, yes, I'm threatened by her. Cindy, yes, I'm threatened by her. Isaac, I could take him in a fight. <laughs> I don't... They just put him in, like, a Letterman jacket and then said, that's it. He's he's part of the squad now. Like, I don't know. The, again, they, they just... He doesn't have any signs of any ability. Besides musical talent. But not for a violin, which is what the whole thing is he hypnosis through the violin again I, i'm just really interested to see where they're going with him how how are they expecting to use him in a fight um and yeah I, I'm, I'm surprised that they they got brought on so quickly you know they're just kind of like yeah let's fucking beat people up <laughs> so cindy this episode two uh, speaking of people being redeemed they did throw a couple of stashes of scenes in there where questioning her the facade that she puts on of she doesn't care about anything and you know we saw that flashback of her with her mom and she loved her mom you know and um but then we also get confirmation from cameron that she says i never cared for her blah, blah, blah. so it just makes me interested to see what they're doing with her um i like it it's really complicated things you know we, we kind of got introduced to her as just she's a terrible person and now we're getting this complicated mess of well she's done bad things but she's also you know maybe not maybe if she had a better you know some certain things in her life i was gonna say a better home bring upbringing of course yeah if, if her parents weren't you know if her dad wasn't a fucking mad scientist yeah she'd be a lot better off but more of you know can we can we reason with her is there some sort of you know what's her motivation at this point you know just because you know i i from what 
they're telling us it would make sense that she, you know her sense of revenge would have been getting killing her dad you know and she did that already so <laughs> i don't really get why you know I, i'm probably misremembering stuff from first season but just based on all the new information we got from this season it feels like they're trying to say she's a good person she didn't mean to kill her mom which would insinuate that she's already gotten vengeance upon the things that have wronged her so why is she continuing this cycle of evil you know other than those are her own aspirations but then again that's just kind of it, it's kind of hypocritical in, in a sense. It, it's it's intriguing but it's also like she's not evil but she is so you know she you know she's complicated but she's also just evil for evil's sake so i i don't get it um which is not a bad thing it's just again i'm, I'm in a weird state of mind right now i'm so fucking tired i've been up since 3 30 it's 11 right now in the morning um <laughs> i got two hours of sleep so that's another thing i was all, like because of the mellow tone of this episode i was kind of not dozing off but i was just like very muted anyways yeah i'm confused by cindy but also intrigued it's just you know she's got these layers of like conflicting emotions inside of her um pat this episode i, I kept pointing out he's he was weird to me like he seemed a lot angrier than usual um you know I, he's yelled at mike and people before but it just felt like a lot of no you can't do this why no 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 so and again, like we've seen that before, we've seen him be the one to set, his, put his foot down and say you can't do this. But at the same time, just with all the mention of Eclipso and how he can influence people, it's making me second guess and like wonder. Especially because he keeps, it's not he's throwing off, but again, last episode we got this idea that he's hiding stuff from Courtney, so, and from everyone else. You know, him and Barbara, they have some sort of secret now that they can't tell. So again, it's just another another thing on this pile of like something's up with pat and i don't know what and because now we know that there's something he's hiding it just makes me question is he even really pat you know what what sort of dark secret is he holding um and again it's just gonna feed into eclipse also as we saw with the teacher you know I, I really don't understand the teacher thing was kind of rushed for me it felt like they're trying to make it more emotionally impactful and stuff at the end there but i was just like okay he's i don't really get what's going on <laughs> um but yeah, I I, I I don't know. Like, I, I, I think Pat isn't infected with Eclipso, but I also could see it like he's a sleeper agent for Eclipso. Um, but then again, on the other side, is that we had that mind control Pat versus Courtney last season. You know, there was Brainwave doing it. So I don't think they would tread that same ground again with him. I don't know. Um, again, the, the rest of the JSA were just useless this time. They're all hung up on their own personal drama, which I get it, but also, I don't know. I think they should have had like a little bit in there of why Courtney was resisting. I get it was the staff. That's what I'm assuming at least because, you know, there's playing up like, you see the light, you're in the darkness, but take my hand, you know, like I get all that. So if that's what they're trying to say, okay, but I think they could have done better of saying, Oh, Eclipse is not affect. Maybe it's not affecting me because of the staff's power, or because I'm in a good headspace. You know, some sort of explanation for why everyone else is having a mental breakdown, but she's just like, "What the fuck are you guys doing?" You know, like <laughs> they should have explained it a little bit more. Um, but at the same time, again, I, I think it's very interesting that the season is focusing so much on light as a concept. You know, not as a as a physical entity, rather. Um, you know, we have, I wouldn't say Green Lantern was the focus, but that was like one of the entry points for this season, Green Lantern, which is a light brace constructs. Um, we have Courtney's staff is like the one thing that the shade is weak to. And now we have here where the light was able to purify the Eclipso possession stuff. So I get it's a star girl show. It's right in the name. So it, she's the main focus, but I just wish the other characters got to do a little bit more or, you know, fought it. I don't know. Like I said, I, I think they could have just explained it a little bit better of why she... I get why she's important, but they should have explained why she was able to do it. 
uh, made it more clear to me. In my opinion, um, Cameron, Cameron doesn't deserve anything happening to him. Like he's he's such a good kid. He's just he's just chill. He's just trying to do some art. His dad died. His mom's died. He he just wants to, <laughs> he just wants to paint. And that city's trying to convert him. And he's trying to, like, get with this girl he likes, but then she keeps running away from him. And he's like, I don't want to get hurt again. I'm just a sensitive boy. And it just makes me so sad because he's just there. He's not, he's not, he, there's, like, not a malicious bone in his body. The closest was when he was talking to Cindy. But, like, even that was just kind of like, don't get near me because I know you're a toxic person. Like, it wasn't even, like, attacking her. It was just, like, keep your distance. <laughs> So I just feel bad. I, I, I'm very curious to see what they do with him because Icicle Jr. is a villain. Like there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He's a villain. There's no like anti-hero status. There's no like, sometimes he's a villain, sometimes he's a hero. He's a villain. So, you know, I, I'm curious to see if the show is going to follow that pattern. Um, but like, as far as we've seen season one and so far this season, he's just mad in his business. <laughs> He has not done anything bad to anybody. And like I said, the closest thing was with Cindy. And again, she's in a weird state right now where she deserves the hate, but also maybe not. But she's a villain right now, so it's fine to be mean to her sometimes. <laughs> I'm so tired, sorry. Uh, I think that's the only big things I wanted to talk about. Um, yeah. Uh, Anyways, uh, post your thoughts in the comments down below. I'll talk to you in the comments. And decide for next week, as always. I have to watch Titans now. And that's going to be another problem. <sighs> Thanks for watching.